Hello, good evening, Tony. Good evening, teacher. How are you? Very, very fine. Thank you. Excellent. You? I'm good. Is it raining right there? Uh, a few minutes stopped the raining, but uh, maybe some we some uh doing light lighting and lightning. Yes, lightning. Yes. Lighting. Okay. But it is it's not raining right now. Okay, and was it hot today? Yes, very, very, very hot. I think that I was I was in San Miguel, but no, it's in San Salvador, Mexicano. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is really like worrying, right? Because I mean, it's been really hot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know why, but but yes, I think that after um you know the earthquake, I thought it was going to be cooler, right? But it's been hotter. No, mm -hmm. it's more hotter. Yeah. Okay. Well, and what about your day? How was it? Good. So so relaxed. Um, less intensive than yesterday. <laughs> yes. But, <laughs> but 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 rest at that time because uh, uh, I I need to send uh, um a lot of emails uh -huh. and and check the the um, projections of sales yeah and taking actions about the the um, the bad results and the good results and uh, it's so so um today has has been a day of analysis so much analysis that's okay mm -hmm. okay so it's been kind of busy right i mean you have been thinking a lot like doing yeah. different things mm -hmm. Okay. And do you work tomorrow? No, thanks to God, no. Okay, so you are going to have a day off. Well, two days off, I think, mm -hmm. the whole week. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. All right, well, well um, we're going to start right now because um, I think that the other ones may have some issues, right? I see that Emerson is trying to connect as well, but uh, I think that he is having some issues with the internet. Yes. Okay, so we're going to start and for today's class, we're going to have different things and we're going to cover um, new information and new topics. So we're going to start with the warm up and today we're going to learn about numbers, okay, at the beginning of the class. Then we're going to move to the third conditional and we also have listening quiz, we have the reading quizzes and we have the speaking time, okay, which is very important. So let me see, yes, uh, right now Emerson is here. I think that Mayra is trying to connect as well. Good evening, Emerson. Good evening, Mayra. Good so, evening. good evening. All right, guys. So we're going to start and, okay, the first thing that we're going to cover is vocabulary, okay? So as you can see right here, we have a couple of images, right? And we have different words in pink. So, what is picture number one? What do you think is picture number one? A uh, pie chart. Yes, a pie chart. Okay, so, you know, this type of charts, right, the one that are like a circle, they are known as pie charts. Yeah, that is the name of this type of uh, graphs, right? Then we also have number two. What do you think is number two? A scoreboard. Very good. It is going to be a scoreboard. What about number three? Thermometer. Thermometer. Oh, thermometer. Ah, uh, thermometer. Yes, thermometer. Okay. What about number four? Thermometer. 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 Uh, a ruler. Yes. Yeah. Whoa. Very good. That was easy, right? Number five. A clock. A clock. Oh. That is correct. What is number six? A scale. Scales, yes. What about number seven? Calculator. calculator. A calculator, yes. And the last one, number eight. Calendar. 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 A calendar, yes. Okay, a calendar. Very good. So now let's move 
and let's uh, talk about, let's match the objects with what they do. Yeah. So number one, a pie chart shows, what do you think? Look at the options, percentages, the date, the length of something, the score, the temperature, the total, the weight of something, or the time? Percentage. Percentages. Okay. Percentage. All right. What about a scoreboard? A scoreboard shows? The score. The score. The score. What about number three? A calendar gives? The, the day. day. The day. Okay, a calculator shows the total. The total. A clock tells the time. 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 A scale measure the weight of something. The weight of something. Very good. A ruler measures the length of something. Excellent. The length of something and the Thermometer measures the temperature. the temperature, temperature, very good, okay? So now guys, let's move, okay? And let's talk about dates in English, yes? This is very important because sometimes we have these probably question, right? How do I need to write the date in English? Okay, so in English guys, the date is like this. Okay, so we first add the month, look at this, January, then the day, right, which is going to be the date could be 15, 16, first, second, whatever, and then the year, and look at all of the examples. What do you think number one is? Well, example number one, this one, it says January because we have a one, January 16, 2016, 2016 or 2016. What about number one? May 2, 1998. Very good. Nine, uh, in this case, it's going to be May. 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 May second. 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 Okay. Very good. Number two? 10, 29, 7047. Mm -hmm. And which month is this? October. October. Whoa. And what about number three? June. Well, 12. Excellent. June 12, 2006. Or 2006. Yes. 2006. 6 2006 no okay with dates we do not use zero we use o 2006 number 4 February 1885 okay so February 3rd 1885 Mm -hmm. Number five. August. Thirty first. First. Twenty seventeen. Very good. Yes. Okay. So, can yes. I say it? um August thirty one or thirty first? Thirty first will be. I mean, you know, um, I mean, whenever you are speaking, you can say 31 and everybody is going to understand. But when you are writing, we need to say 31st. I mean, you need to add the ST when you are like in a formal context. It is very important. But of course, you can just say 31 and people will understand. Mm -hmm. But yeah. if you're writing for academic purposes, you need to say and add 31st. That's why I would recommend, Tony, like using the proper way, right? Just to avoid any mistake in the future. 
Yes, tell me. ¿Cómo se dice números ordinales en inglés? Oh, ordinal numbers. Mm -hmm. When you use the date. Yes, correct. We use ordinal numbers with dates. That is correct. And what about number six? September 3rd, 2020. Okay, September 3rd, 2020. Mm -hmm. Yes, very good, right? So this is when it comes to dates. Yeah, remember guys, we first add the month, then the day, the date, right? And then the year. All right, so now let's move. And let's move to this, which is big numbers, because I know that sometimes uh, what Good we chair. struggle with, yes? Good evening. Good evening, Atilio. I, I do the listening, I drive in. Okay. One moment, please. Thank you, Atilio. All right, so um, I'm pretty sure, guys, that we struggle sometimes with big numbers, right? Big quantities. And it is really, I would say, it is normal, right, to struggle with numbers. So today, of course, this is just as a warm-up, right, about numbers. We are going to try to mention probably important things for you. But we are not going to cover numbers, like, in deep, right? But we are going to start with big numbers in this case. I know that you know how to say uh, 10, 20, 30, 100, 200, right? I think that sometimes it's very difficult when we have thousands, right? Or a million or a billion, yes? So in this case, as you can see, big quantities or big numbers in English are the following. We have 100, we have 1,000, we also have 100,000, as you can see right here. We also have 1 million and we have 1 billion, yes? And this is very, I would say, easy because we have just zeros, right? But the most difficult part is whenever you have different numbers than zeros, right? So for example, in this case, look at this, okay? Something that we need to remember and something that you need to always, always pay attention to is this. Remember, one million, million, in this case, we have three, six zeros or six numbers, right? Billion, we have nine numbers. Yeah, you need to learn that by heart when it comes to numbers. Yes. So in this case, look at this. We have the first one, 115. In English, it's going to be 115. What about 2,659? Mm, 26, 59. Okay, 2659. You know, we can say that, but whenever we are reading quantities, no, we cannot read quantities like that. Whenever you are like reading, for example, um, things about money, we cannot say 2659. We cannot say that because if we say only it like that, year. only years, because if we say it like that, the other person won't understand. Okay, so this is, let's say that this is money. Okay, this is money. Yeah, so we need to read the whole number, guys, with numbers, with money. Just with dates, we can say the, the numbers like two by two. But with money, no. You need to read the whole quantity. So we have 115, the first one. 2,000, 2,000, 2,659. Mm -hmm. What about this one? Look at this. Yes. 2 
hundred, yes, two hundred fifty six, two hundred fifty six thousand. Here in the middle goes thousand, yes, two hundred fifty six thousand five hundred ninety eight. Yeah, like that. Then let's move to this one. Million. Okay, so eight million five hundred sixty-three thousand because we have the middle of those numbers. Okay, here five hundred sixty-eight. Look at the sequence. Yeah, look at the sequence. And the last one, which is really big, right? Billion. So we have seven billion, seven billion, five hundred sixty nine million. Yeah, million, five hundred. 87,000, yes, 120. You need to learn the sequence and you need to learn the quantities. Huh? Yes, Tony? Teacher, then the numbers or uh, monetary uh, quantities in English? Yes. It's different in Spanish because uh, if is. I say seven billions, mm, is with twelve zeros. Correct. But in this case is only with nine zeros. Nine. And in this case, it's correct that the try to say it, like I read it in Spanish, like uh, to transform in English, or I what's wrong when I say seven hundred of millions five hundred sixty nine millions mm -hmm. and then the the the, the other numbers um, yes mm -hmm. you know it, it is really um i would say numbers in english and in spanish in this case on this big quantity uh it changes so um in this case whenever you maybe interpret that number in Spanish, you need to change it to a Spanish, right? Mm -hmm. We need, yeah, we need to change everything. That's why, guys, you know, maths in English are really, I would say, complex. Yeah. In are English, really... it doesn't exist the millions of millions. Correct. It doesn't exist. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then in this case, we have billion, trillion, and four million, no sé cómo se diría. Yes. Uh, billion and trillions is yeah in, in the other is in, in the in the correct way in, in English. In but, English. Okay. We need to reinterpret and talk about like uh, American or, or, or in English. Yes. This yes. is the same in England or in the England is different. It's or the is same. The same in, in the same interpretation. Yes, okay. it's the same, the same thing. Yes. Okay. Um. Yes, guys. So in this case, um, this is whenever we are talking about English, okay? So in Spanish, it will be different, this big quantity. Mm -hmm. But in English, it's like this, right? So, okay, now let's do something, okay? Remember that we have here big numbers, right? This is like the first example. And you see all of the zeros, right? Then we also have the second example with different numbers, no zeros, right? Yeah. So right now, what we are going to do is that we are going to say the number. Let's see. Okay. If you want, open the class so you can have those examples and you can uh, identify, right, which is the number. So let's see. What about this one? This one is? Okay. 50. What about this? 100, 100, 
fifteen. Excellent. One hundred fifteen. What about this one? Two thousand thirty. Two thousand hundred. Two hundred. Uh -huh. Thirty-six. Thirty-six. Very good. What about this? Three hundred nine. Three hundred ninety. Very good. Okay. Yeah. So excellent. Mm -hmm. Hundred. Okay. Hundreds. What about this one? Two thousand. Two thousand. Two thousand. Two thousand twenty-three. Excellent. Mm, 17,000. 17,000. Very good. This one? 20,000. 20, 20, 20, okay. Now let's move to this one. Okay, remember it? The remember. Five million. Okay, five. Five million. Two hundred. Two hundred. Fifty-six thousand? No, doubt it. Thousand? Thousand? Um, Five hundred seventy. Eighty-seven. Eighty-seven. Okay, eighty-seven. Okay, let's see. Yes. Uh -huh. Okay. Thousand in this case. Let's see. Five. Mm -hmm. Million. Million. Two hundred fifty-six thousand thousand nine nine hundred eighty-seven. Very good. What about this one? Nine million mm -hmm. eight hundred yes ninety-six. Thousand? Yes. One hundred twenty-three. Very good. Excellent. Okay, so now the last one. This one. Five billion? Yes. Two hundred fifty-six million? Yes. Nine. Yes. Very good. Okay. So you see, I mean, I know that it's not that easy, right? Because I mean, it's something that we do not practice every single day, right? You won't say those big quantities like daily, of course, right? But at least you need to know how to read them. Yeah, you need to learn. So try to learn like just the sequence, guys. Just count the numbers, right? Yeah, million, billion, yeah, thousands. Yes, just keep that in mind and that will be a little bit easier for you when it comes to numbers, okay? We're going to practice with this next week, all right? Just to see if you will still remember. But right now, uh, this is basically, I would say, um, an easy way, yeah, for you to learn, like big quantities, yeah. How to how to read them whenever you see those type of quantities in English, okay? So now let's move and uh, let's take the first reading quiz. Yes. You know, the reading quizzes that we have for today are really simple, but you need to pay attention, guys. Read the question and try to see which is the correct answer. So we have two readings and both of them have only two questions. Yeah. But you need to read carefully, please. Understand the question, okay? So this is the first, um, you know, email for you to answer um, the first reading exam and let me send it, okay? Let me, let me send the link. 
I will give you only five minutes because this reading is just two questions, all right? There you go. And the passcode is reading, reading, okay, reading. Open it, please. And I'm going to share my screen so you can see the, the, the time and the reading, of course, right? Let me see if this is the one. Yes, this is the one. Okay, so let's start. Just five minutes for you to answer this one. Okay, thank you, Emerson. Okay, I think that most of you finish with this one. Let me see. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. All right, guys. Let's take the other one. Okay. Let me send the link. The second one is uh, just two questions as well. Okay. And there you go. And the passcode is the same. Uh, reading, capital letters. Let me share my screen. And I'll give you uh, five minutes as well, okay? So you have. Um, five minutes, guys.
Mom made him see and everything because he looks like maybe the whole big deal. Okay, guys. Um, so let me see. Okay. I can see that most of you got 100. Mm, some of you got low scores okay guys we need to um if you want you can retake the quiz right whenever you feel ready retake it but you need to read okay and understand the question understand what the the question is about right what are they asking you uh -huh. so let's see let's move okay and today we are going to cover this topic which is very useful and this one is the third conditional do you know something about the third conditional mm -hmm. something or no nothing Thing. okay no, you don't remember it? Maybe, well, I think that probably no, you haven't heard about it, but okay. So guys, uh, the third conditional is actually very useful in English. Why? Okay, um, uh, Tony, please help us reading this, all of this. Okay, the third conditional, it talks about the past. It's used to describe a situation that didn't happen and to imagine the result of the situation refers to a hypothetical situation yes thank you okay guys so the third conditional the third conditional is basically this type of expression this is a conditional that describes yes a situation that didn't happen and you imagine the result of this situation if that action, if that situation would have happened. And here we are going to use the past participle of the verbs. You will see why. Basically, the third conditional refers to a hypothetical situation, something that wasn't true, okay? You will see how. In this case, we have, first of all, the structure the structure and some examples, yeah? For the third conditional, we have positive sentences, negative sentences, and we also have questions, yes? Let's start with positive sentences. Which is the structure for the third conditional when it comes to positive sentences? Well, look at this. If plus subject plus have, plus verb in past participle, plus complement. And let me ask you, do you identify which tense is this one? The tense that we use in the first sentence? If plus subject plus has plus verb in past participle plus complement. Which tense is that one? Present perfect. Oh, it's not present perfect because we have had. Oh, past. It is past perfect. Uh -huh. Past perfect. So I don't know if you remember had, in this case with the past perfect, it is había, hubiera. Yes. So in this case, we use in the third conditional, we use a sentence in the past perfect. And the sentence that goes with the um, if clause, yes, is the one that is in past perfect. Yeah. And then we have another sentence and we have coma. Look at that, coma. And we have subject would have 
would have plus verb in past participle plus complement. So as you can see, the structure is kind of long and we use the past participle of the verbs a lot. Yeah. So we have, if you had gone to Brazil, you would have had lots of fun. Okay, so what am I telling on this sentence? Si tú had gone to Brazil, si tú hubieras, yeah, si tú hubieses ido, yes, a Brazil, ¿qué hubiese pasado? You would have had lots of fun. Tú te hubieses ajá, divertido, divertido mucho. mucho. O hubieras tenido un tiempo divertido, si lo quiere como divertido. interpretar literal. Yeah. Ok. Yes, es el hubiera. ¿Qué hubiera pasado si hubiera hecho esto? O si no hubiera hecho algo. Yes, algo que ya no se puede cambiar. Cosas hipotéticas. Yes. Uh -huh. um, for example, whenever you say, um, si hubiese tenido el dinero, lo hubiera comprado. Algo que ya no puede cambiar. Algo que usted no tenía el dinero, no lo pudo comprar. Si hubiese tenido el dinero, lo hubiese comprado. ¿Cómo diríamos eso en inglés con el tercer condicional? Porque es una oración en el tercer condicional. Si yo hubiese tenido el dinero, yo lo hubiese comprado. If I had. If I had. had Mm -hmm. Money. Yes. I would bought. I would. I would bought. You are missing something. Have bought it. It. <clears throat> Correct. Mm -hmm. So with the third conditional. We shouldn't forget all of the auxiliaries. Yeah. Uh -huh. <clears throat> mm. Let me see another example. Uh -huh. Another example that you can think of. Okay. See. Uh, uh -huh. Yes, go, Tony. If I had studied, mm, is it studied no? in past participle? Yes, studied. Had, if I had studied French, I will have traveled, traveled to, to France. France. Uh -huh. To France. Of course, right? But you didn't study French, right? Mm -hmm. uh -huh, that's what we are like. Uh -huh, that's the idea that you didn't do what you actually are mentioning, right? Uh -huh. So then we also have the negative. Yes. It is, yes, Norris. Is correct to say, if I would have had a car, I would have have a gun to San Miguel. No, it is not correct. Okay, why not? Why? Yes, in this case, Maurice, is because we need to respect the sentence that goes with if 
la oración que va con la cláusula if, siempre y para siempre y toda la vida, va a ser la oración que está en pasado perfecto. Nunca vamos a poner la oración con would have después de if. No se puede. Siempre tenemos que respetar esta oración es la parejita de if, la de pasado perfecto. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right, you're welcome. So what about negative? Yes, with the negative, well, as it says negative, we need to add just negative, right? Look at this. Yeah, so we have if plus subject plus hadn't, verb in past participle plus complement. And when you are writing, guys, do not forget that we need to add comma when you are writing. Then subject wouldn't have verb in past participle plus complement. And we have the example. If they hadn't drunk so much last night, si ellos no hubiesen bebido mucho ayer en la noche, last night, They wouldn't have felt sick today. No se hubieran sentido enfermos el día de ahora. Hmm? If they hadn't drunk so much last night, they wouldn't have felt sick today. Si ellos no hubiesen tenido el dinero, no lo hubieran comprado. Si ellos no hubiesen tenido el dinero, no lo hubieran comprado. If they hadn't had the money, they wouldn't have bought it. Negative. Mm -hmm. It's so low, but... Yeah. Um, si no me lo hubieses dicho, si no me lo hubieses dicho, no me hubiese dado cuenta. No lo hubiera visto. Y you haven't saw. Uh, si you no haven't tell, uh, told me. If you hadn't told me. No lo hubiese visto. I, I wouldn't have saw it. Seen it. Seen, uh, seen it. Okay. Seen it. Uh -huh. Yeah, so you see? Part. Uh -huh. yes, part. past participle, uh -huh. past participle. Yeah, uh -huh. si, si me hubieran pagado a tiempo, hubiera ido. Si me hubieran pagado a tiempo, hubiera ido. Uh -huh. yeah. If, If they, they had paid me. Paid me. I would have gone. I would have gone, yes. So if they had paid me on time, I would have gone. You see? But they didn't pay you on time, so you couldn't go. Hmm? In this case, the, the complex is that 
add is in negative, but in the in the second part, when um, mm -hmm. it is positive, right? Uh huh. Exactly. The the el wouldn't is that make sense in negative, but no have. Exactly. So yes, thank you, Tony, for mentioning that. And in this case, it is not like mandatory, okay, that we need to use two negative sentences, right? It is not mandatory. We can use one negative and one positive because if you remember the example, right? So it is one sentence in a negative um, structure and the other one is positive, right? So if they, uh -huh. well, if they had to pay me on time, I would have gone, I think that I said, right? Mm -hmm. And in this case, we have two positives. But now let's give you another one with one positive and one negative. Okay, so um, okay, si ellos no me lo hubieran dicho, yo lo hubiese leído. Si ellos no me lo hubiesen dicho, yo lo hubiese leído. They hadn't told they me. They hadn't told me. Mm -hmm. Oma. Yo I, lo hubiese leído. I would have read. Past participle of read? Read it. I will have read it. So look at this. We have one sentence in negative and we have this one in positive, right? Because it's not like two negatives and we have negative. No, I mean, it, it depends on the idea, right? But you can see uh, on the first one that we can use two negatives, but it depends on the idea. It all depends on your idea, guys. Yes? Mm -hmm. Okay. And the questions, right? The most of the time, whenever we use questions with the conditionals, we use WH questions, yeah? Because those are type of open questions where you can share all of your ideas, yeah? Because at this level, you are able to speak, yeah? That's why with the WH questions is uh, like this is structured. WH question plus word plus the subject have verb in past participle complement if subject had verb in past participle and complement. And we have what would you have done if you had had that problem? ¿Qué hubieses hecho si tú hubieses tenido ese problema? Hypothetical things, right? ¿Qué hubieses hecho si hubieses estado en mi posición? Cuando se pide una opinión, ¿verdad? ¿Qué hubieses hecho, Liz? Right? Condicional tres. Third conditional. Uh -huh. Yeah. So, ¿qué hubieses hecho si tú hubieses tenido ese problema? And how can we answer it? Right, because I mean, if if somebody asks you, hey, what would you have done if you had had that problem? You need to answer with the third conditional. Well, if I had had that problem, I would have called my boss. So you see, so your answer should be with the third conditional as well. It is not but mandatory. Not, uh -huh. no. But it's not mandatory to, it, 
to respond no. the same way. Okay. Now, it is not mandatory, right? But in order for you to practice it, I will say that most of the time right now that we are learning this, we need to say like the complete sentence, right? Mm -hmm. Because if not, you can say, well, I don't know. Or you can say, I will have called my supervisor, right? Like just a short answer. But if you want to practice like the whole sentence, we can say, well, if I had had that problem, I would have called my supervisor. Mm -hmm. But yes, it's not mandatory, right? That you answer it like the same way. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now let's move and let's um, check some examples, okay? So we can um, better understand this, yes? And Maurice, help us reading number one and two, Maurice. Tony, yeah. number three and four. Jose, uh, five and six, seven, eight, and nine. The last three, please, um, Emerson. Okay. The if first... I have, is, if, if I have a ring, you would have a wedding wet. Mm -hmm. You would have a garden wet if it have a rain. 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 You will have passed passed your exam if you had worked harder. Hard. If you had worked harder, harder. Okay. You will have passed your exam. Very good. Thank you. I would have believed you. I would have believed you if you hadn't lied to me before. Mm -hmm. If you hadn't lied to me before, I would have believed in you. Believed you. Okay. Emerson. Oh, you are on mute, Emerson. I'm sorry. No. I would have about your a present if I have a note. It is was your birth birthday. Mm -hmm. If you haven't have a your email, I'll have written to you. Mm -hmm. If you have have given give me your email i wouldn't have written to you i will have written to you written to you excellent like that written okay guys look at this okay let's pay attention to something yes so look at the first one if it had rained coma you will have gotten wet si hubiese llovido que hubiese pasado Tú te hubieses mojado. Yes. Look at the sentence number two. You would have gotten wet if it had rained. Ah, teacher, but I see that we don't have if at the beginning. We have if at the end. Yes, because we can switch, right? We can switch the sentences. Yeah, so we can start with the subject in the sentence with would have, and at the end, add the one in past uh, tense, past perfect tense. Yeah, for example, you would have gotten wet if it had rained. Tú te hubieses mojado si hubiese llovido. And look at the idea, it doesn't change. La idea no cambia. Si hubiese llovido, tú te hubieses mojado. Tú te hubieses mojado si hubiese llovido. No coma. En no coma. Thank you. Yes, we don't use coma. Yeah. But if you use if at the beginning, coma is needed. Yeah. So you see, it's very like simple in this case. It depends on you. Aquí se depende de su lección. Si usted quiere utilizar if at the beginning or use the second structure o utiliza esta estructura. La segunda, que if va al final, but keep in mind, 
que la oración que va después de if toda la vida, no importa si es la primera o la segunda, siempre va a ser la de pasado perfecto. ¿Sí? No se le olvide. Ahora, this one, right? You would have passed your exam if you had worked harder. Uh -huh. Or if you had worked harder, you would have passed your exam. The same idea. Different structure, same idea. Yeah. So, tú hubieses pasado el examen si tú hubieses trabajado más arduo. Yeah. I would have believed you if you hadn't lied to me before. Yo te hubiese creído si tú no me hubieses mentido antes. If you hadn't lied to me before. Si tú no me hubieses mentido antes, I would have believed you. Te hubiese creído. The same idea, different structure. Coma, because we start with if. No coma, because we start with a subject. I would have bought you a present if I had known it was your birthday. Yo te hubiese comprado un regalo si yo hubiese sabido que era tu cumpleaños. Now, look at this one. Here we have contractions. Yeah. So we have, if you'd given me your email, como ya sabemos que el if va siempre el pasado perfecto, entonces esta contracción no es de would, es de had. If you had given me your email, I would, I'd have written to you. Si tú me hubieses dado tu correo, yo te hubiese escrito. If you had given me your email, I would have written to you the long way, without contractions. Uh -huh. You see, there are many things that we need to keep in mind, okay? When we write. Yes. What questions do you have? What doubts do you have? No questions, no doubts? Yeah. Okay. okay, not right now. Okay, so now it's time for you to put into practice what we have learned then, okay? so. Teamwork, what you need to do is that you are going to create three positive sentences, three negative sentences, and three questions using the third conditional. Make sure the ideas are clear and make sense. Yes, asegúrese que sus ideas estén claras y que también tengan sentido. Las ideas with the third conditional. Yes, so we are going to create nine in total, three positive, three negative, and three questions. Yes. Okay, so we are going to work in teams so you can discuss, right, if you have questions. Yeah, so let's see. Yes.
Okay, thank you. Uh, the, 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 the work. Okay, let me see. With the class in the page number. Number, number eight, maybe. Okay, I'm going to, to copy. My gosh. Okay, I got it. But okay. the first, the first one. Okay. Okay. In positive if, ways. Okay. If she had been there, comma. Uh -huh. Is she have been no, there? No. Had had with the. Is she had been there? Comma. Uh -huh. I would have okay. Um, if I Okay, if I had woken, had woken. Abigail, uh, if if she had studied for the exam, she will have passed. You miss the if. Uh -huh. Pass. Yes. Yeah. If I had woken ten minutes earlier, um I I would I would I would um Arrive. Uh -huh. I don't know if arrive or I come on time. Um, to the meeting. Ah, uh, yes. Um, yeah, I, I put the, these um, sentences that translate and I don't know if it's correct. Say, if I had woken up. Yes. Oh, okay. Woken up. Mm 
okay. Ooh. If you have If you have bought, bought, bought the buy, yes. If you have bought, uh, no. If you have bought, um, if you have bought tickets for Barbie movie before. <laughs> Okay, um, you, you have you have, you have um, God. If you had, yes. Sí. Yes. If you had bought. And the next, I don't know. Uh, could be if I had have money, I will have both the car. I... Have, have, yes, money. Come, I will have both the car. Have uh, yeah, both the car, yes. Okay. Negative. Uh, maybe if if he if. If she hadn't, eating, eating bad food. Um, if, if she hadn't, yeah, no, I, uh, I, eating, I think. Mm -hmm. Very fast. Yes. If she hadn't ate. Is past participle? Oh, eating. Yes. I, I heard eating. <laughs> no, e eating. Um, e? E A. Yes. If you hadn't eaten bad food, um, she, she don't, she, she wouldn't have, uh, I don't know if, if, 
if correct to say correct saying um Mm -hmm. oh, it's it's okay. No, that, that, what what was? No, um, I thinking um, taking that taking taking a uh, <laughs> stomach or a hard stomach, but. It's okay. Um, um, that no, it's okay. <laughs> she wouldn't have a stomach cake. She won't have. If she had needed bad food, she wouldn't have stomach cake. But I think that if she wouldn't have 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 had. Hot, hot. Have, have. Present. Present. No. Good. The first hat. No, oh, sorry. <laughs> Yes. Hmm. Mm. Um, if if he if he hadn't Sleep, um, is left late, lately, or or late. If he hadn't slept late, um, he are you done? I work. We working home. Okay. Just... For a question. Other questions, okay. Yeah. I see, I'm afraid of it. Uh -huh. Which hotel will they have stayed at? Um, stay at? If, if, if this one has had any vacancy. Pero no, no, no le he puesto sujeto. Help me, teacher. You're, you're mm. good. Which hotel would they have a stay at? Uh -huh. If? If, uh -huh. this, if they uh -huh. have uh -huh. no If money. they, okay. If they had had. Fast forward. Uh-huh. 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 U
maybe talking about when you go to a, a, a restaurant that have a, um, all, all you can eat. Oh my God, I think a Maris. <laughs> Yes, but Ma no, Maris had a had an issue with the internet. Okay, I only. You're the only one okay. here. Mm -hmm. Don't okay. worry, Tanya. Okay, no it's problem. okay. All right. So let's see which hotel would they have a stay at if they had had enough money. Uh -huh. What? Maybe in what what would you would you eat eight? Oh, what would you? Mm, you're missing something. What you auxiliary? What would you what? What would you? Uh -huh. You're. What would you? What? Mm. No, no, it's not. It's no. not correct. Because in the example, what you have? Uh -huh, what? Mm -hmm. you have, okay. What would you have? Uh -huh. Eight. Past participle of eight. Eaten. Excellent. Eaten. If um, you had gone mm -hmm. in uh, in all. You can eat time. If you yeah. had gone in all you can eat. Oh, but in that case, at at all you can eat time. At, uh, and, and remove eight. Uh -huh. Sí, pero time en el restaurante, at the, resta at the restaurant. What would you... No. Uh, the restaurant no what would you what would you have eaten if you had gone at all in time um it, it is okay but you are going to probably um add a lot of like information i mean give me one second it is really windy all right so uh, what would you have eaten if you had gone at all you yes like that because if you add a restaurant you will be like Adding a lot of information, the same information. A lot of information that is not necessary. Okay. Uh huh. Yes. Okay. And we can use how too. Yes. What would I have? Um, estoy pensando la pregunta. Um, que cómo habría cómo habría actuado uh -huh. a, um, actuado es acted what uh -huh. would I have uh -huh. past participle acted uh -huh. if I have uh -huh. no no just no no the truth no como hubiera actuado si hubiera sabido la verdad if I had known the truth Just the verb, which is the past participle of no. The past participle of no is no, 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 the truth. Okay. 
Uh -huh. Let me check yours. Um, seeing here if he had had more time, we will have this. Okay. If I mm, number three in the positive. Mm, no, the mistake is on the first sentence. If I had enough money. Mm, no. no, it's the auxiliary tonic. Remember that it's going to be past participle, so it's not have. It is going to be have. So if I had had money. In both. Uh, yes. Uh, okay. Because the part the past participle have is have. It's okay. have. Right. Uh, if I had had money, I, I would about that. Yes. That is correct. If I hadn't known this, I wouldn't have gone. Uh -huh. If we hadn't seen, we wouldn't have believed. Uh -huh. If we hadn't uh okay, past participle of run. Run, run, mm -hmm. run. No, mm, run by run is run. Run, run, run. and run too. It's run too. Run with yes, you. Uh -huh. If we hadn't run faster, we would have gotten what. Uh -huh. Correct. This is a combination. Negative with positive with the second part. Yes, it's okay. Which hotel would they have a say at if they had had enough money? Huh? What would you have eaten if you had gone at all you can eat time? Yes. How would I have acted if I had known the truth? Okay. Very good. Do you have any question? No, I only need to practice more. <laughs> yes, it's just practicing, right? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Okay, very good. Okay, let's go back. Okay, I think that you okay. all finished. Yes. Okay. Okay. Okay, let's wait for the other ones to join. So they use Friday, they only have eight participants. <laughs> oh, no. Okay, we, we are still waiting for the other ones. But yes, I, I think that Fridays are like this, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I see Mayra. I'm seeing, we're missing Nellie, Jose, George, Emerson, Wendy, Abigail. Oh my God, Maurice, what happened? Te fue la energía en mi casa. Oh my God, it's okay. I see the upper part of your of your head, Marie. Who is? Okay. All right, guys. So Terminate. let's. Be... Yes. yes. Okay. Yes, he did. All right. So I'm going to take the attendance. Okay, before uh, moving on today to the uh, uh, um, exercises. All right, so Atilio Ernesto Castillo. Present teacher. Thank you. Um, Carlos Omar Linares Cañas. I think that he said something. Uh, Carlos, Miss. okay. Uh, Carlos Vladimir Rodriguez Diaz. Present teacher, present. Thank you. Okay. Eduardo Franco Núñez. Present teacher. Thank you. Emerson Ulises Monroy Calix. Present. Thank you. Fatima Gabriela Loza Castillo. Fatima. Jonathan José González Domínguez. Um, George Antonio Sánchez Quiñones. Present teacher. Thank you, George. Jose Bernardo López Montes. Present. Yes. Juan Antonio Elias Flores. Present teacher. Thank you. Juan Jose Herrera Alvarenga. 
Present teacher. Thank you. Carla Sofía Argueta Chévez. Kenia Elizabeth Rodríguez Zelaya. Present teacher. Thank you, Kenia. Luis Miguel Corbera Enríquez. Mauricio Antonio Velázquez. Present teacher. Thank you. Mayra Cecilia Peña de Aparicio. Yes. Present teacher. Thank you. Nelly Livet Andrade García. Present. Thank you. Raúl Antonio Jordán Miranda. Sandra Abigail Bonilla Cano. Present. And Wendy Maricela Ramírez Guevara. Okay. So, thank you, Carla. Okay. Um, let's see. Let's uh, listen to your questions and sentences, guys. Mayra? Okay, the positive is teacher. yes. Good evening, no me mencionó teacher. Yes, sí la mencioné, Wendy, pero creo que no uh, me escuchó. Okay. Okay. Mayra. If she had studied for the exam, she would have passed the exam. Passed. Passed. Past the exam. Hmm? Uh, another, if I been born in a different country, I will have learning learning to speak a different language. Okay, learn, learn, uh -huh. learn. Okay, yes. to speak a different language. Uh -huh. Um. Emerson, or I say all of I, I don't know, you decide, Mayra. Oh, okay. So Emerson. Emerson. <laughs> okay. For the negative, uh, if they haven't left, we would have eaten it together. Okay. Number two, if, uh, if my cup haven't left the home, he'll have not died in the street. Okay. The last one. If you haven't have learning English, how would you do life have different? If you hadn't learned English, we would your life have been different. How would your life been different? How would your life have been different? Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, now questions. Um, the question. Questions. Oh, okay. Um, what would you have bought if you had won the lottery? Okay. Um, we will, we will, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, what would we have done if it had shaken harder? Okay. Mm -hmm. And um, where would you have gone to school if you had had the choice? Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you. All right. Um, let me see which was the other team. I think that it was uh, Nelly. In house, okay. May share. Uh, can you yes. see it? Yes. Yes. <laughs> okay. For a positive, uh, we had. If I had woken up ten minutes early, I would have arrived on time to the meeting. Mm -hmm. If yeah. you had bought the ticket for Barbie movie before, you would have got better seats. Mm -hmm. If I had money, if I had had money, I would have bought the car. 
Mm -hmm. Okay, negative. If if she hadn't eaten bad food, she wouldn't have had a stomach. If he hadn't sleep, slept late, late last night, he wouldn't have been sleepy today. Mm -hmm. If he hadn't stopped studying for the exam, he wouldn't have failed it. And yeah. George, the questions? Um, the questions, um, I only type two sentences. Mm -hmm. and the first one is, uh, where would you have gone this morning if I hadn't given you the address? And what movie would you have watched if Barbie's movie hadn't been on the movie theater? Okay, thank you. Okay, I have a couple of observations right here, guys. Um, okay, the first observation is going to be with sentence number two, positive. Okay, it says uh, better seats. In this case, instead of adding seats like that, we are going to add S E A T. Seats. S E. Yes. Uh -huh. And you should be lowercase. The Y. Lowercase. Thank you. Then the other, oh, the other one is with pronunciation, okay? So with the negative is going to be a stomachache. A stomachache. Yeah, a stomachache. But you will join, lo unimos. A stomachache. A stomachache. A stomachache. Con K al final, a stomachache. A stomachache. Like pastel. Cake. Cake. Uh -huh. Como Como yes. Cake. A stomach cake. Say it, Nelly. Stomach cake. Stomach cake. Stomach cake. Okay. So, um, and um, you need to say a stomach. A stomach, guys, is a stomach. A stomach cake. Stomach cake. A stomach cake. Uh, stomach cake y solo estómago se dice stomach. Stomach. Uh -huh. Yes. Okay. Um, the other one is with sentence number three as well. Negative. Stop. 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 Yes. Uh -huh. And uh, the, the spelling, guys, he wouldn't have failed. Failed. Ahí dice. Failed. 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 Uh, remove L. Remove ED. Oh. I mean, no. Uh, add L, but after I. No. After I. Yes. Okay. Excellent. Um, where... Where uh this one guys? Um we we shouldn't use have when we use would. I mean, where would you have no have have would where you. would you have gone this morning if I hadn't given you the address? Address double D. Mm -hmm. What movie would you have? Have watched. Uh, you are missing the letter. Yeah. Mm, no. Watched if Barbie's movie hadn't been on the movie. Yes. Now, yes. Very good, guys. Thank you. Okay. Yes. Thank you. And Tony, can you please share yours? And Maurice, yes. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, okay. Okay. 
Please, Maurice, you first. Okay. Deposity. Okay. Depository. If she have been there, I will have seen her. If he had had more time, we would have visited San Miguel. Mm -hmm. If I have had money, I would have bought the iPhone 14. 14. The negatives. If I had known this, I wouldn't have gone. Okay. If we hadn't seen, we wouldn't have believed. Mm -hmm. If we hadn't run faster, we would have gotten wet. Yes. I'm going to say the first one and now it's the okay. that one. Which hotel will which hotel will they have stayed at if they had had enough money? Mm -hmm. Perfect. Go, Maurice. What? Okay. What would you have eaten if you have gone up all you can eat ten? Mm -hmm. uh, how would I have either if I have no no one the truth? Yes, acted. Okay, acted. Acted. Uh -huh. Okay, very good. Yes. Excellent. Okay. It's All right, fair. guys. Yes. I have a question. Yes. In the question, in the question uh, structure, mm -hmm. never be shame. For example, put the beginning. If they have had enough money, which other would you have to say? The oh, first yes. example. Yes, we can and, like like switch positions. Is correct. Yes, it is correct. Ah, oh, oh, okay. Yes, it is correct. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Like, uh -huh, if they had had uh -huh, enough money, uh -huh, and then that one, which hotel, which hotel would they have stay at? Uh -huh. Yes, it is correct. Okay. Uh -huh. Thank you. Okay. All right, perfect. Any other doubt that you may have, guys? No? Okay. So then let's move and now let's work on the listening uh, exam, okay? The listening one. Very simple, the listening one as well, okay? Um, let me send the link. Give me one second. Okay, there you go. And the passcode is listening. Capital letters. Okay. Let me share the sound. Yes. Okay, listening time. Okay. I'm going to play this recording uh, twice, but if you need an extra time, please let me know. Okay. So here we go. Ready? Yes. Okay. Yes. All right, here we go. In this video, Aubrey, let's talk about neighborhoods. And if you could, please describe your neighborhood, what it's like, and what it's like to live there. Okay, so I live in a small apartment complex right now, and there are a lot of things I like about it and definitely things I don't like about it. Like what's really nice is that we do have an on-site laundry facility. So um, Very nice. It's, it's just right there. Like, I just have to take my laundry in. Um, it would obviously be nicer to have washer dryer hookups in my own place, which I'm moving soon, I hope. So, um, you know, that's nice. I'm right by a couple of grocery stores, um, hospitals across the road. Well, those are really good points of why you would want to live in the area. Is it a quiet neighborhood? Yeah, it's pretty quiet. Um, the apartments that I live in, they're very small. You know, for the USA, they're definitely 
different standards depending on where you live, right? Mine's about 500 square feet, which is small for the area. So we don't have a lot of kids. So it's very quiet. You know, there are dogs around, but not tons. So it, it's nice. Uh, it just could be nicer. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you for sharing a little bit about your part of the world. Okay. Here we go with the second time. In this video, Aubrey, let's talk about neighborhoods. And if you could, please describe your neighborhood, what it's like, and what it's like to live there. Okay. So I live in a small apartment complex right now, and there are a lot of things I like about it and definitely things I don't like about it. Like what's really nice is that we do have an on-site laundry facility. So um, very nice. It's, it's just right there. Like I just have to take my laundry in. Um, it would obviously be nicer to have washer dryer hookups in my own place, which I'm moving soon, I hope. So, um, you know, that's nice. I'm right by a couple of grocery stores, um, hospitals across the road. Well, those are really good points of why you would want to live in the area. Is it a quiet neighborhood? Yeah, it's pretty quiet. Um, the apartments that I live in, they're very small. You know, for the USA, there are definitely different standards depending on where you live, right? Mine's about 500 square feet, which is small for the area. So we don't have a lot of kids. So it's very quiet. You know, there are dogs around, but not tons. So it, it's nice. Uh, it just could be nicer. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you for sharing a little bit about your part of the world. Okay. Do you need me to play it an extra time? Yes. Yes. Okay. Here we go. In this video, Aubrey, let's talk about neighborhoods. And if you could, please describe your neighborhood, what it's like, and what it's like to live there. Okay. So I live in a small apartment complex right now, and there are a lot of things I like about it and definitely things I don't like about it. Like what's really nice is that we do have an on-site laundry facility. So um, very nice. It's, it's just right there. Like I just have to take my laundry in. Um, it would obviously be nicer to have washer dryer hookups in my own place, which I'm moving soon, I hope. So, um, you know, that's nice. I'm right by a couple of grocery stores, um, hospitals across the road. Well, those are really good points of why you would want to live in the area. Is it a quiet neighborhood? Yeah, it's pretty quiet. Um, the apartments that I live in, they're very small. You know, for the USA, there are definitely different standards depending on where you live, right? Mine's about 500 square feet, which is small for the area. So we don't have a lot of kids. So it's very quiet. You know, there are dogs around, but not tons. So it, it's nice. Uh, it just could be nicer. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you for sharing a little bit about your part of the world. Okay, guys. Teacher, I have a question about that Aubrey's sing. I move in soon, I hope. This is that I sing, that, that she sing. Cuando dice, I move in, I move in soon, I hope. Uh, 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 I don't know. Me estoy moviendo. Ah, yes. I'm hmm. moving soon. I hope so. I hope so. I'm moving soon. Mm -hmm. uh, but not soon like the platform. It's soon. Oh, yes. Yeah. Soon, like S O O N. Soon. I'm moving soon, I hope. Uh, yeah, she said this. You will see. I will share the, the screen. I think that you, you mean this one. Let me see. I'm moving soon, I hope so. Like soon. Like pronto. Are you moving somewhere? Okay, okay. Okay. All right. Let me see your scores. Was it difficult? No, not so difficult. No, At this right. time, I already talk more. Um, <laughs> Clear. More clearing. Clearly. <laughs> yes. Okay. All right. 
So let's practice speaking, okay, for about 10 minutes, guys. Please open the, the class, okay, so you can see the questions. We have a couple of questions, but we are going to practice just 10 minutes. So the first questions um, that we are going to practice with is uh, basically we are going to put into practice the third conditional, okay? What would you have done if it had been raining heavily this morning? Okay, what would you have done if you had found half a worm in the apple you were eating? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What would you have said to the waiter if he had given you the wrong food? They're conditional. Yes, let's practice with those. And then we are going to come back because we are almost done, okay, with our class. Yes. Okay. All right. Okay, what would you have done if it had been raining heavily this morning? Uh, usually when, when it's raining heavily, it's at night, but, but in this case, if have been raining heavily this morning, uh -huh. I prepare my umbrella, and my okay. raincoat. Maybe. Yes. And go run faster to my <laughs> car. Uh, your car. Maybe, maybe. This is one. Or if I if I have um if if happy. If I if I have more money, I don't work. And in this case, uh, if it had been raining heavily this morning, um, I just like um, feel the water or see the the rain down and take a coffee cup and see in the rain. Maybe. Mm -hmm. uh, what would you have done? Jorge, or Mayra, or Nelly, okay. oh my gosh. Today we have a lot of participants <laughs> in this room. Yeah. In my case, uh -huh. uh, okay, Mayra. I, I prepare other clothes to change into my at work. <laughs> Maybe I I um, how do you say memoji? Uh, to wet. Um, maybe para que no se moje. No, yo porque me voy a mojar llevaría ropa adicional. Uh, I, I going my... to wet. Because I'm going to get wet. Ah, to get wet. Uh -huh. To get wet. Uh -huh. I need a change of of clothes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. okay. Interesting. In my case, mm -hmm. in my case, uh, I would have made a made you wait for it to stop raining. Okay. Okay. You prefer to wait. Okay. Yeah. It's more responsible and intelligent. <laughs> <laughs> but you go late like work. <laughs> Thank you, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
something else. Oh, okay. Yes, um, mm -hmm. um, I will have put my uh, jacket and prepared my umbrella and mm -hmm. uh, uh, go to my work. And take the bus. Yes. Or the transportation. Okay. No, take a bus. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very good. Okay. Talking about the possibilities of of, uh, of the future. What do you have done? If you had found half a worm in the apple where you were eating, is this la mitad de un gusano, verdad, teacher? Yes. Uh -huh. O sea que la otra mitad está dentro. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh my gosh. Mm, interesting question. Um, I... Maybe maybe the worm ate apple. I don't know. It's made for apple. Mm, it's delicious too. <laughs> oh my god! Okay. With with complement. <laughs> I need more salt or tahin. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh my god. Okay. Mm. In my case, uh, mm -hmm. I would have uh, removed the worm. The half of a worm. <laughs> <laughs> and the other half? Uh only remove the one. Okay. Maybe uh, uh, you just shallow it. <laughs> <laughs> swallow? Uh, sw swallow. Uh, swallow, sw it. swallow. Uh, swallow it. Mm -hmm. yeah, okay. Swallow it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And you, maybe... Mayra or Nelly or Abigail explain another another option. Mm -hmm. I will vomit <laughs> <laughs> and, <laughs> and drop up the the another piece of piece. I I I I will vomit too. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> okay. What do you have to say to the waiter if he had given to given you the wrong food? I think that this question is is formulated by another way. What would you have to say to the waiter if uh, we had um uh, un pelo um un pelo en tu comida uh, cómo se dice okay. pelo uh, uh, hair. Uh, hair 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 yeah. hair uh, hair just hair just hair hair a uh, hair in your in your food. plate of food uh -huh. Uh -huh. Ah, interesting too. okay uh -huh. what would you have said Mm. One time in the uh, Wendy's, uh -huh. I I eat two hamburger. I ate because they mm. I ate uh -huh, two hamburger because uh, they they have this say se equivocaron. They made a mistake wrong or make a mistake. Uh -huh. Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> You get one free or two free. Yes, you know one free. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> that is good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. Uh, I stop of eat okay. of, of eat the food. But in this case, I think that the hair is not so disgusting. Uh, or uh, disgusting or nasty is correct, yes. Nasty. Yes. It's nothing or... that uh, it depends the type of hair. <laughs> okay, done. <laughs> um, uh, let's see. Mm, mm, mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, guys. I think that is time. Okay, let's go back to the next okay. session. Okay. Okay. okay.
Okay, guys. Well, it's time, guys, for us to go. But remember, okay, to work on the platform. Guys, work on the platform, please. Okay, I have seen that some of you um, have not, right, worked on the platform. So please try to complete the platform this uh, weekend, okay? And Nelly, are you there? Yes. yes. Okay, can you please stay with me just for the feedback? All right, guys, then the other ones, thank you. Um, I'll see you back on Monday and I hope you have a great weekend, okay? Take care, yeah? Okay, thank you. Care. Okay, bye-bye, good night, guys, take care. Okay, so Nelly. Let's see, Nelly. Uh, we're going to have a short feedback, okay? I just want to know how do you feel with our classes? How do you feel with um, the topics that we have been covering? Mm, yes, the topics are okay. Okay. Uh, and the class, the methodology of ways, um, is always like me. Okay. Like, uh two lots model are are very good okay and i love the dynamic with the creatives um the speaking time and yes i like uh, okay okay all right so nelly um is there any topic that um has been difficult for you or something that you um, probably have not understood? Yes, um, in the case with we use a note, um, in that moment uh, was and uh, the topic wasn't uh, totally clearly for me. Mm -hmm. um, I'm I I practice in there and that I I I'm not sure. <laughs> okay, um, you still have some questions. Yes. Okay, yes. with enough you said, right? Yes, enough. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So let's see. Um, let me let me see if I can get the the class where we cover that topic. Okay. Yes, I um, remember that uh, with um, when we have a a verb mm -hmm. and an adjective, right? Uh, but when we have a note and adjective, it's like uh bad description <laughs> or something like that mm, okay um that was with two i think oh two two yes two mm -hmm. that's a bit <laughs> that's a bit too <laughs> okay so let me see yes i know i know which is the topic that you are talking about okay so just let me see if i can ah oh, yes i have it right here Yes, I think that you got confused with this one. Let me share it. Let me see. Yes, this is the one. It was class seven. All right. So, Nelly, in grammar, we have this topic, which is enough and two, right? So, we covered this topic that day. And, okay, so whenever we have enough, Yes, we can have, this is the structure with adjectives. Yes, con adjetivos. Yes. yes. So, for example, the car is cheap enough. Yes. Entonces, estamos diciendo que el carro es lo suficiente barato. So, la estructura siempre va cuando llevemos adjetivos. Adjetivos, el adjetivo va a ir antes que enough. Cuando sea un adjetivo. Always, always, always. Uh -huh. Lo suficientemente barato, lo suficientemente ancho, lo suficientemente largo, lo suficientemente bonito, lo suficientemente atractivo, lo suficientemente grande. Lo que usted quiere decir que sea un adjetivo 
en inglés va a ir antes que enough. ¿Ok? Beautiful enough, attractive enough, big enough, amazing enough, tall enough, long enough, etc. Yes. Yes? When we have adjectives. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Now, we also have two. Yes? So in this case, two, it indicates the right amount of something. Okay? Indica que está demasiado. Cuando se quiere decir demasiado caliente, demasiado aburrido, demasiado largo, demasiado contento, ¿ok? Yeah. Es demasiado. Entonces, cuando nosotros decimos demasiado es que en realidad se sobrepasa del, um, de algo necesario. ¿Sí? Okay. Dice que two means more than necessary. Nos indica más de lo necesario. Entonces, por ejemplo, y utilizamos two más un adjetivo. ¿Sí? Por ejemplo, too old, too expensive, too big, too hot, too sweet, too salty, too cold. Yes. Entonces es que está demasiado, es más de lo necesario y por lo tanto cuando algo es más de necesario, bueno, en ocasiones es algo positivo, pero la mayoría de veces nosotros decimos que algo más de lo necesario cae en lo negativo. Sí, okay. porque no es el, el monto ideal. So, in this case, siempre va a ser to plus adjective. Y significa demasiado, más de lo necesario. Y tiene una connotación negativa por ser más de lo necesario. Ok. Uh -huh. Bien. That was with this. ¿Hasta aquí tenemos preguntas? No. Uh, but I remember uh, when we use in, in the sentences uh, with the verb and the verb it in past participle, I think, and enough, or I don't know, but <laughs> no, um, yes, the other um the other uh, structure that we covered was this one. I'm going to show. It. I'm going to show it. Okay, is this one enough plus noun? Uh huh. Okay, so in this case. We are not talking about adjectives anymore. Ya no hablamos de adjetivos. Ahora vamos a hablar de nouns. ¿Y qué es un nombre? Un nombre, un noun en inglés, es cualquier cosa que usted vea. Eh, puede mm -hmm. ser pared, puede ser silla, puede ser agua, puede ser manzanas, pueden ser ventanas, pueden ser lapiceros, pueden ser celulares, cualquier nombre en inglés. ¿Sí? Entonces, en este caso, utilizamos enough, plus noun. Ya no es adjective plus enough, sino que ahora es enough plus noun. Entonces, uh -huh. enough va primero y después va el noun. Fíjese aquí. I have enough money. Tengo suficiente dinero, suficientes sillas, suficiente experiencia. Uh -huh. Enough cell phones, enough food, enough mm, shoes, enough clothes, enough pens, enough pencils, enough water, enough beds. Yeah. So, en este caso utilizamos enough plus noun. Okay. Uh -huh. So, basically, esas tres estructuras hemos visto bueno, dos con el not y la otra que es tú. And uh, with the verb, with verb, no. No. No, es que me acuerdo en una, en una de las actividades uh -huh. y donde tenemos que modificar este, creo que era verbo el que estaba. Entonces, tenemos que poner el ED 
en unas. Entonces, esa tarea sí me costó también resolverla. Creo que la pregunté en la clase también. Pero no, no me no acuerdo ahorita cuál es. Voy a buscar. Uh -huh. Yes, but no, I don't remember right now. No hemos visto enough plus verb. Mm -hmm. mm, de hecho, enough plus verb no, no tenemos estructura, como enough más el verbo. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, búsquelo y me dice cuál es el, el, el como el el tema para poder como aclarar la duda, porque si es de la plataforma probablemente ahí pues hubo algo que que tal vez la confundió Sí, realmente no, no, no me acuerdo bien pero sí, este, me acuerdo de que en, en la clase se explicó de que se agregaba el ED, si no me equivoco este. el, pero, pero creo que sí era con el tema de no pero no, después creo que vimos esto, no sé si esto será vimos esto vimos esta parte no sé si se acuerda eh, sí, pero no, no no era esa no era esto Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Eh, me acuerdo que daban así como dos opciones esa esta uh -huh. ah, ah vaya se y sí ya me recordé esta es la esta uh -huh. es la que usted me dijo en el momento que la plataforma no la agarraba como correcta sí se recuerda entonces pero porque en la plataforma ellos le han puesto, no me recuerdo cuál es lo que le han puesto ellos. Le han puesto en una, creo que en, en lugar de, de enough, le han puesto great. Uh -huh. Entonces es algo distinto. Pero aquí, the marketing department, ah, ok. Entonces usted dice la oración. Bye. The marketing department hasn't created enough interest. Uh -huh. Ah, se le pone de, Nelly, porque recuerde que en este caso esto es presente perfecto. Uh -huh. Entonces el verbo, por lo tanto, va a ir en pasado participio. Pero ahora ah, okay. uh -huh. nos movemos a la segunda. No, ya no tenemos presente perfecto. Uh -huh. Entonces sería our products offer Enough features and benefits. Uh -huh. Ajá. Y aquí ya tampoco tenemos presente perfecto, porque solamente en la primera teníamos presente perfecto. The place strategy demands enough channels of distribution. Luego la cuatro, ya tenemos futuro. Retailers will stock enough goods and sell them. Uh -huh. We lack enough information on the competition. Creo okay. que eso fue lo que dio. Sí, sí, mi duda era por eso, porque yo veía que al, al primero se le agregaba el ED, pero a los otros no, entonces no sabía por qué. Ah, ok, no, vaya, pero entonces en ese caso es porque ese es el presente perfecto. Acuérdese uh -huh. que usted va a identificar los tiempos verbales con los auxiliares. Entonces, en ese caso, este es un auxiliar del presente perfecto. Si se fija aquí, no hay ningún auxiliar, pero entonces sabemos que esto es presente simple. Uh -huh. Este es presente simple. Este es futuro porque llevamos will. Y ese también es presente simple porque no uh -huh. llevamos auxiliares. Uh -huh. Ok. Bye. Ok. ¿Sí queda más claro esto? Bye. Perfect. Okay, Nelly. Um, well, 
my feedback for you is that I really like that you participate whenever you are able to do so, okay? Remember that we have just one week, right? Yes, almost one week, six classes still right, left, right? So mm -hmm. I want you to participate even more. Yeah, whenever you have the opportunity, please try to participate. I don't know if you would like me to include any topic next week, any topic that you consider that is important for you or something that you consider that is important for you. Um, <laughs> okay, don't worry, okay? It's okay. So Nelly, in this case, um, well, just that, right? Please try to participate a little bit more. And then I think that um, the platform, I think that you you have like, um, you know, resolved most of the exercises, I think, right? Yes, I am finished. Yes, I, I saw it. Okay, Nelly. So then if you actually um, remember about something during the week, right? Next week, please let me know so we can include that in the class. All right? Okay. Okay, so thank you, Nelly. I hope you have a good yeah. night and take care. I'll see you back on Monday, okay? Okay, thank you. Right. Good thank night. You. Good night.